What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. We are going to be covering the one hero that I wanted so badly, so badly. And I did get him, I did get him, you know I got him because you've seen the summons when I was summoning for Nicholas. Imagine pulling Quinlan, uh, made it all okay. Alright, so we're going to do a guide and a showcase. We're going to go over his exclusives, emblems, auras, skills, gear, how do we build him, all that kind of thing. You know the drill, you know the drill by now. So let's have a little look first at his skills. Uh, Frost Spear deals two stages of 80% attack damage each to a single enemy, the first stage of which has a 15% chance to inflict one layer of three. So not only is he causing a lot of health burning damage and a lot of attack damage here, he's also got a chance to freeze, which can be massive. On the target for one turn and the second stage has a 40% chance to inflict one layer of health burning on them for two turns. Now 40% isn't huge and 15% is very very low. But the chance does increase up to 80% for health burning and I would say this is your main goal on his base. It is to, you know, don't focus too, like, is, you know, 15% chance is very very low. Uh, Erosive Spear, his first active skill, deducts 25% of max health from self. Afterward, he deals two stages of attack to a single enemy, each of which deals damage by 6% of Quinlan's max health and extra damage by 6% of the target's max health. Each stage's damage caps at 24% of Quinlan's max health. This skill damage is considered health burning damage. Now, I am a little bit dubious on this. Does that mean mastery plays an effect here because it's health burning damage and health burning is combined with our mastery so you would think it does combine with our mastery too you would think so right that's how it reads so health rate mastery is huge for this skill uh damage does increase as you can see here his passive there's a hundred percent chance to inflict a layer of health burning on enemies targets whose speed are not lower than self for two turns at the beginning of each wave quinlan deals 18 percent more health burning damage his targets under freeze status yeah why, why am i why am i thinking so basically what this means is we want to build him as slow as we can. We don't want anyone being faster than our Quinlan. And that's why exclusives are so important for Quinlan. We'll get to that in a moment. You can see it down here. I know. Um, the final active skill, Devil Flame Swing, deals three stages of attack to all enemies, each of which deals damage by 2% of Quinlan's max health and extra damage by 2% of a target's max health. Each stage's damage caps at 8% of Quinlan's max health. This skill's damage is considered health burning damage, again, meaning mastery does play an effect, or at least that's as much as I believe. Afterward, there is a 70% chance to inflict freeze on enemies under health burning status for one turn and a 70% chance to inflict a layer of health burning on enemies not under health burning status for two turns. It does increase and the cooldown is only four once it's increased. But let's have a little look at his exclusives, shall we? Let's have a little look at his exclusives and why does he get so goddamn good? Level 1, there's a 50% chance to inflict freeze on the target for one turn after Erosive Spear deals damage. The chance is increased to 80% if the target is under health burning status. Now is Erosive Spear... yes, okay. So that's his second ability. I mean, you know, this is a much better chance to freeze the enemy. Freeze. The, so if you are looking to freeze, you want to use this one and it's also going to do a ton of damage. Level 2, Quinlan increases his turn meter by 10% for every enemy target whose speed is higher than him at the beginning of each wave. This is why we want to build him so slow. Get him E2, it's massive, it's game changing. A 50% increase on his turn meter and then pairing him up with the likes of Space, maybe even Guhana. Maybe even Guhana, just to push him into that first move situation. At level 3, the first stage of Devil Flame Swing has a 100% chance to inflict a layer of health burning on enemies whose speed are not lower than self for 2 turns and a 60% chance to inflict a layer of health burning for enemies whose speed are lower than self for 2 turns. So that does kind of counteract the whole speed thing. But it is much more viable to build them very, very slow. Very, very slow. And you know, you would argue, well, hang on a minute. We need to be careful with the increase of speed. Well, I wouldn't worry too much about it. I wouldn't, you know, 100 speed is something, but the, the multipliers on the stats are so big. Emblems. How do we emblem him? Oh my goodness. Cars, you haven't even finished his emblems. It's fine. It's okay. We got it. Um, <laughs> oh my goodness. How embarrassing. Not the first time this has happened. Not the first time. Won't be the last either. So we'll just roll with it. 
This are the emblems I have for my Quinlan. We've gone for attack. We've gone for uh, when self health is full, damage dealt increased. Damage dealt and damage taken is increased. This is a risky one to use. Uh, before the end of the first turn of each wave, direct damage dealt is increased. This can be nice with his second or his first active skill. Uh, at the start of a turn, self dot damage dealt is increased. Targets under control status, meaning hopefully they're freezed. Direct damage, our second or our first active skill, sorry, is going to be causing more damage. Pay off old scores for targets with damage over time debuff. Dot damage is increased. Again, dot damage increase here. And those whose health is higher than self damage down. Now, this probably won't count as much in PvP. There's not going to be as many enemies with it higher. Um, probably this may be better. I'm unsure. We're definitely going to take the mastery. Definitely going to take the mastery route of it. I want to take on the support tree. We want to take health increase with self and shield damage taken. Before the end of the first turn, each wave affects it is increased. Uh, the turn, I mean, uh, the cooldown on a skill, the chance can be useful. I mean, you could go for the turn meter reduction taken just in case you're up against, say, an Asindo or something like that. But I wouldn't worry too much about that one. Um, and again, we're in two here, but I would definitely go for the skill cooldown on this. It may mess up your rotation in PvE combat. You may want to switch this about if you're using it for PvE. And then the final one here, and we won't be going for this one because no one's going to be um, slower than, than us. It, and this is why, this is exactly why I haven't pushed it so much. Uh, you could go for Sacred Winds. Actually, you know, this isn't going to be any benefit to us. Sacred Winds would be the only other option. And I don't need to push the emblems to that. You know, it is a non-controlled debuff from the self at end, uh, end of a turn. But it's not vital. It's not vital. Okay. Auras. Now, my levels are very, very low. Uh, Mastery Expert here. Uh, blue Aura. A very easy Aura for you to obtain is massive because we're gaining 24% when we have self-health above 50 percent it's massive it's a is that purple or freaking colorblind ruins it is blue because i can and it also says elite someone mentioned that before in the video other auras we can use if you've got greens you may want to go for the range hit aura um that's probably going to be your best best bet um you could go for brutal recovery aura because he is a little bit squishy he is a little bit squishy um Uh, well, maybe we, no. Dwarven blessing. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go. This is purple. That's not going to do any good for you. Um, nope, nope. Hitmaster. Maybe if you're really lacking in effect, it. Bold confidence. Nope. We don't want that one either. What about a legends? We could go for something like. Um, is it the hit grand master aura? This one here. Effect and health increase. Uh, Combat Vanguard wouldn't really know that's much better on a support hero. Um, survival, you know, it would definitely be the hit grandmaster. You don't need this either. You know, I personally think this is the best aura for him. Mastery expert aura being blue. Um, the other one you could go for the increase of south turn meter, but again, that's not going to do much for you. Mastery surge aura does go up to 18% and it does give our allies a boost as well. But when we consider 24% compared to 18%, I still pre preferably go for Mastery Expert Aura for Quinlan. I feel like this is the best. So let's have a look at the gear and what kind of gear we would put on him. Now, I have gone for Toughness, okay? I've, and you can see my effect it is very low here. That's because he does have a good chance on his effects to be hit. So I haven't pushed too much into this. As you can see, I've gone for Health. I've gone for Health and Mastery. I've gone for health and mastery, and it's working very, very nice. He's hitting very hard. I mean, this is a lot. Um, the best sets to go for are either toughness, the health, tenacity, effect, resistance. This can be nice in arena. It can be nice in PVE as well, giving you a big boost on your health, giving you tenacity, meaning taking less damage from crits, and also effect resistance is great for PVP too. Uh, the other one would be Accuracy, Mastery and Effect. It can be nice depending on what kind of way you want to go with your Quinlan. If you want to go for Effect, that would be a very, very good way for you to go. The best set other than Toughness, and this one is very, very good. It is very good for all health burners. It's the Endurance set. Health increase, Mastery increase is massive. It is. Ma There's no doubt about it. It is absolutely huge. 
You can go for health increase as well, as you can see I've done here. That making him pretty easy to build in that sense. If I was an earlier player, it would definitely be going down the health route, especially if you have him at E2. Um, affect it possibly as well, especially very early on, or if someone simply doesn't have the gear and they need to push through a little bit. But what kind of stats did I roll? I rolled uh, tough, obviously, you got mastery and affect it was the target here. On the chest, we've got affect it and health rate again. On the boots, we've got mastery and affect. This wasn't great, but, you know, we took the health percent increase. I would much rather be using an endurance set, as you can see. 10% health, 20% mastery. On the uh, jewelry piece, we've got mastery and affect. This sense would have been better if it went to affect it. On the aura, uh, artifact, sorry. Mastery first should be your priority, then affect it or health rate. On the second here, now I could go for affect it and push my affect it way up through, but, but, you know, it's health increase and then mastery as well has been nice. Let me just see if I have, have got anything that's gonna, see, this will be a very nice piece as well. And it would push him up quite a bit. It would push him up quite a bit. Um, ooh, hello. You know what? I'll take this. I'll, I'll put this on him. I'll put this on him uh, because you know we're not we're not losing any stats, but we're gaining twenty one percent. We're only losing two thousand health here. So this is a very very nice piece. It's only elite. It's only an elite, but that's been a big improvement to my Quinlan while doing this video as well. On the final artifact, you do not want any speed. You, I mean, okay, substat speed here. That was just unlucky. But health is the way to go. Mastery and health rate would be ideal. Have I got anything like that? No. No, I don't. But that would be the ideal way to go. The ideal way to go. So he's built. We have 622,000 health. 82% uh, affected. 142% mastery. Let's have some fun with our Quinlan, shall we? Now, you know, campaign. Uh, let's do a little campaign challenge here. I don't know how he would do through it. I mean... Let's just throw him with Catherine. He's going to nuke down the wave. You know, this isn't a very good example, but it is still fun to watch. And this is why I like doing these. So, so let's just watch this wave just be destroyed. I mean, we have freezes there. We have health burn on the allies. And you're at health burn with, you know, okay, that I would have expected that to kill it. I mean, they are dead on the next turn. It's not massive there. Not absolutely huge. No, we've seen better. And he is a little bit squishy, considering how much health he has. He just doesn't have the defense. And my blue mark talents aren't fantastic. They could be a lot better. Uh, so let's counter-attack here. Again, we're going to freeze and health burn. And, you know, it's, it's, it's game over. It's game over on the next turn. They don't get really to move, meaning we're safe. And they're also dead on their next move. Wait, why are you not dead? No, you're dead. Okay, good. So let's have a look at how he does against a boss. And when we're using Quinlan against bosses... When we're using Quinlan against bosses, we really, really want to use his first active skill because this does much more damage, much more damage. As you can see, 580k you're there per tick. Did get a health burn off on him. We can now cleanse this with Catherine. And that was without feebleness too as well. If we look at his final active skill, this is basically an AoE. It's not very good at single target. So much better off using his first active skill. As you just seen, the damage, including the boss had feebleness too that time as well. It's not ready yet, and we're going to be stunned. No, we're not, because we've got cleanse from Catherine, thank goodness. And now we will get a representation of him with Feebleness 2 and Defense down on for his final hit. Let's have a look. 606,000 on each hit. Didn't even need to go to the health burning tick. But you can see why Quinlan is so, you know, sought after. Let's have a little look in Arena, shall we? I'm not going to go against Brynhild, because that isn't going to work. That isn't going to work. Brynhild now is... Yeah, annoying. Annoying for our Quinlan. Same as Paulin, actually. Same as Paulin. This is a little team I put together with Quinlan, Guhan, and Nita Space, and Gilliman. Um, it does work, but let's have a little look at how it works with Quinlan. So, like, our Quinlan, the term here increase, you can see him straight away up quite far. If we pair him up with Space, then you can just see how this works. We boost him up. He is the next to go. He is the next to go. And not only that, that means that Guhana is going to boost him up a bit further as well. So that can be very nice. Now, effect resistance is up on all these allies. Meaning, do we go, do we go for the first active skill or do we try and risk the effect resistance up? 
it's probably not the best option, is it? So if we target his space, maybe we can do a bit more damage. I don't know. Never tried this before, but we'll see. Not quite enough. It was very close to killing. It was very close to killing. Unfortunately, space, Gilliman has got frozen. However, Kuhana did resist, and we can now boost our turn meter again. We have got speed down on us. Now, obviously, Nita's going to do Nita things, and... Yeah. Nita, you're ruining the showcase of Quinlan. Why are you doing that? So, Gilliman hasn't had a go yet. Uh, but this kind of team is really, really nice. I know we have no protection from crowd control. We have no protection from crowd control. But, you know... It... If we're attacking, it's not too bad. We can select who we want to attack, right? We can select who we want to attack. And uh, it just works really, really nice. I like it. And um, it's very nice with Quinlan coming in on that second attack with his AoE. If the enemy has effect resistance. It's just different ways that you can play it. Different ways you can play it. Point at me attacking and kill. In fact... Let me try. Let me try. Because I want to see if we can freeze... This Brynhild with Quinlan, no we won't because Quinlan's going to go before Gilliman, meaning it won't do it. Oh, it did do it because the chance is 50... That's, I don't know why, that was just pure luck. That was pure luck. But if we AoE, if we AoE, then Powell in here at E5 is going to get turn meter increase, meaning it's just going to get cleansed straight away. It's just going to get cleansed straight away. Brynhild can't hurt us back on the freeze. And uh, now the poison's coming in, and that's just, that's worked wonderfully. It's worked absolutely beautifully. Boop, 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 Agatha, calm down. Calm yourself down. And you can see, that was a surprise win. I didn't expect that to happen. It did happen, though. Um, we got lucky of a freeze. We got lucky of a freeze, and now, yeah, space there as well. Like, like, that Brynhild isn't going to get a turn. That was a lucky win. That was a lucky win. Who else can we attack here a moment? Um, let's just try someone else a moment with... Mm -mm 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 -mm. Lord Eric's going to be far too fast. Lord Eric. Friggin' auras, bro. <laughs> um, let's try this team. Angry Newhan. I, I think we targeted him in a, in a previous video as well. I'm not doing it on purpose, it's just you, you're there. Um, let's see if we can beat this team. Effects resistance is up. And again, again, we need to be worried because our Gilliman is slower than our Quinlan. And this is annoying. I wonder if there's a way we can work around it. But let's go with the first active skill against Paulin here. How much is it going to do? Nearly took him out, actually. Didn't land any. Didn't land any goddamn debuffs or health burns. But it's done enough for Agilman to take him out, meaning we can now clear up with Nita. And, of course, we know, even if they're still alive, Quinlan's coming in on that next move with his AoE. They're going to get frozen. They're going to get health burns on them. It's going to do a ton of damage. Uh, Rice, let's, 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 Rice Combo. Love you, bro. But I need to attack you. I need to attack you. Did a collab with Rice Combo. If you haven't checked out Rice Combo's YouTube channel, make sure you do, because he's got some very good information, especially PvP meta kind of stuff. So definitely check him out. I am... I am supporting Rice Combo. I, I think he deserves all the recognition. I, he deserves all the recognition. He's a very helpful within the community. And he's just got a lot of time for people. And that deserves recognition. Okay, space. See, if his space was faster, this would have been this would have been much tougher. But alas, she isn't. She isn't. And that's just a gear check kind of aura thing as well. Um it's not any way represented to what he knows, because he knows a, a lot, a lot. And that's a win as well. It's just nice to see this team working. It's nice to see this team work. I don't know how it would perform on auto. Maybe it would be okay. But we can't pinpoint who we want to pinpoint. Can't pinpoint who we want to pinpoint. Let me just, just for the lulls, let's attack Lord Eric. Let's, let's see the speed of his team. The speed of this team. You see. Oh. Oh. Ooh. But we can't let him attack once. He doesn't have any effect resistance here, though. Oh, my goodness. Eric. You need to bring back your Brynhild for sure. For sure. Yeah. Because that... That shouldn't have happened. And I don't know... 
maybe that's because I increased the speed on my Guhan. I'm unsure. I'm unsure. But that was a surprise win. And that wouldn't happen normally if he's running his normal team. That wouldn't happen normally. Let's try Nate. Nate has a Brynhild in his team, along with Santa, Paulin. You know, this is a, this is a very, very nice team. Very, very nice team. And Nate knows his stuff as well. He's he's a good, good player. Let's have a let's have a gander here. Let's have a gander. Uh, let's hit Paulin. And he's low on health. He did get effect hit on him. Guhan is now going to boost us up. We now come in with a Gilliman. Pow! And now Nita. Ooh, okay, I forgot. He's got Brynhild. <laughs> I forgot he's got Brynhild! I'm getting carried away with myself. Um, Alright, we're going to reduce the turn meter of Santa here. And then we're going to speed down. Oh, we're going to get debuffed. We're going to get debuffed. That's fine. Uh, this is true. This needs to be a freeze. Oh, it's not. But hey, we did not trigger it. <laughs> yeah, we're dead. We're dead, and that's how the cookie crumbles. That is how the cookie crumbles. Can we survive long enough? Will these ticks be enough? He has leech, right? He has leech. Yeah, we're dead. Oh, oh, and that's what happens. That's Brynhild for you. That's not a Brynhild killing team. Wait, maybe it is. I should have targeted his Brynhild first. What am I doing? Let me try this again. Can we freeze with Quinlan? We can. Wow. And that just makes everything so much different. It changes the whole outlook of the game now. Brynhild frozen means she is in trouble. She's in big, big trouble. She is unfrozen now, but there we go. And yeah, GG. That's just how different it can be. And that's why it's important that we get this information out. Because Quinlan is solid is solid and you can see him doing very well here against Brynhild okay who else could we target someone with a really really high effect resistance Brynhild 67 hang on Reaper me too let me, let me check Reaper, Reaper and then I'll check I'll check 67 as well what's the effect resistance 131 Wait, did he have? Did she have one free? One? Okay, I've seen higher, but that's still pretty high. Oh my god, the freeze is there again. Let me just target Paulin and a strip. Okay, there's a cleanse. That's a strong Paulin. That's a strong Paulin, and now you can see all havoc unfold. All havoc, and that was a strong Paulin. How the hell? He survived. Okay, let's try 67. Reaper. Nice Paulin. What is this one? 142 affection. A bit higher. A bit higher. Be interesting. Resist. And that is a loss. That is instantly a loss. Think. Yeah. Okay, I think Santa's dead. Yeah, Santa's dead. So we just reduce the speed on this Elena, but she is going to get a cast off, and now we're dead. We can try. We can try. There's no harm in trying, guys. Don't ever feel bad if you lose a battle. Don't ever feel bad if you lose a battle. Who else can we attack? A hippo got one before. Matissa. Let's have a look at this at Matissa's Brynhild. What's the effect of this since? Just to see. 112. And it resists. All right. So we just got lucky with those freezes before, but, but it did work for a bit. I'm glad that I kept going through because we would have gotten a false representation of it. Maybe it'd be more important to increase the effect it on our Quinlan now, thanks to the freeze. Hmm. We do get two chances, but space. Space Guhana and Quinlan is a beautiful, beautiful set. And you, I mean, the, the whole team is a, is a wonderful setup. Um, but yeah. But yeah. Okay. I think that's enough of PvP, right? That's enough. You guys have seen enough of PvP. Where else does this benefit us in the game with a Quinlan? Tower of Mark. Blue Mark is very nice with Quinlan. But now Nita's here. He's going to be getting overshadowed. But if you do have Quinlan and Nita together, we can remove Nasil from there. 
if you have these two together, you're going to find your life a lot, a lot easier for Blue Mark Tower. Hugely, hugely. Uh, Dwarven Ruins, I haven't tried enough teams with him yet. I can see him being very good for wave control and clearance. So I will look at building uh, a team for Dwarven Ruins. Faction Abyss, again. Um, that I haven't actually pushed through Faction Abyss since. I haven't pushed through Faction Abyss since. Okay, we can remove... Madalena. She doesn't do enough. Okay, no. Alright, let's just see what the hell happens here. Let's see what happens. Why not? Why not? We don't need to speed up. Kill us, Liz. That's a lot of damage there. Hopefully the tick... Okay, didn't do too much. Didn't do too much. A lot of CC here, which is nice. Uh, tough. We'll save that. Save the AoE from Act. No, we'll use it. And we'll use one AoE from Madeleine just to get some health back. We can't be taking much more damage from her. Uh, let's have a look. It is only stage 22. It's not a huge, huge stage. Buff the speed. Uh, target the boss. Mammoth, you beast. Defense down. Let's move that time meter and increase the buff time. Two health burns. I probably should have used a sin though on carry there. What am I doing? Probably should be killing carry. Is Quinn then? Is it is AOE next? It is. Perfect. Perfect. Is Bleed going to kill us? Surely not. Oh my god! Come on, Agatha! Show them your strength! <gasps> yeah, uh, that, that's exactly what happened. That's how lethal a faction of this can be. Alright, so I feel like we've done enough of Quinlan. Am I happy to get him? Yes, because he's massive for me in PvP. Should you build him? 100%. He's a fantastic hero. Should you eye him? Well, you've just seen how effective he is. So you can make this decision for yourself. But I strongly suggest you do throw eyes into Quinlan because he's a fantastic hero. Thank you everyone for tuning in. And I hope you have a fantastic day or evening wherever you are. <laughs>